Dads, Lads and Kebabs. Sponsored by Ghostalware. And now, it's Dads, Lads and Kebabs. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning. Welcome to another show of Dads, Lads and... Kebabs. 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 Hello. Hello, Hello. everybody. Hello. 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 <laughs> Hello. 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 Who is it? Who is it? <clears throat> Hello. Who's there? Hello. Hello, mate. Hello. Wait, let me see again. Here we go. <laughs> Boom. Welcome to another show of Dad's Lads and Kebabs. How are you all doing, mate? You all right? Yeah. Not bad, you. I'm all right, mate. Well, today we're going to talk about cocaine. No, we're not. No. We're not. We're not. We don't advocate drugs, people. How are you doing, sir? What are your pal? Chumley? Oh, I'm, I'm very good, thank you. How are you? Mm -hmm. I'm all right. That's good. I'm nice a... to hear. I, I am... like it. I'm all right. I am good. He's not I left, am breathing. He's not middle. He's all right. Exactly. He's right. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like you're not you're not saying I'm not overselling myself going, do you know what? I'm on top of the world. I did my eye spy off this morning, you know what I mean? I shat a gold brick for lunch. Do you know what I mean? I made fifteen million at lunchtime. No. I'm alright. I'm good. He's alright. And sometimes that's the best place to be, is just content with being alright. Whew, that was a bit of an introduction. How are you doing, sir? Just <laughs> you introduce <All> right. <laughs> You're alright too, yeah? <laughs> I, I am, I am very good. Oh fuck! Wait then. Mm. Very good. Turn the power on, otherwise my laptop will die in a minute. There you go. Could Forgot that. Do with that, my friend. Technicality, people. Make sure you're prepared. Of... Mm -hmm. But yeah, new job is going very well. So very happy. Deuces. Very, very Love happy it. Happy indeed. Yeah. New beginnings. New beginnings. And new starts. Let's new just enjoyment. say, the company I'm working for, the benefits are very good. <laughs> hey, buddy. Welcome to corporate. Welcome to corporate. <laughs> um, yes. Yes, that's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. It's uh, very, very good. A bit surprised, but yes, very good. So, good. And nice. that's it. Nice. All is, nothing else to be said. You're enjoying it. The benefits are good. The money's good. Hours increments. Good. <laughs> yeah, the hour the hours are incredible. It, the the increments on your first day are good. Mm. So hey, the only way's up now. Baby. Yeah, get back yeah. on Tally. <laughs> Maybe not. No. Oh but yeah. Positive week for you. Yes, yes, it's the start Good. of another week today. So yeah. it's another week, another day to start afresh, start again. Uh, another, another few positive. dollars. <laughs> yeah. So be positive, people. Literally. And try and do your best. Absolutely. So yeah. this week to the show, what have we got going on? You explain. You tell me because I am ready. For anything, we, throw it at me. We are going to discuss a very controversial figure last year, in 2023. Uh, mm -hmm. I think now a lot of the world is coming round to his sort of thoughts and uh, ideas of the world and how people should live their lives. So we are going to talk about... The Joe infamous... Exotic. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's still in prison. He ain't getting out yet. Uh, Andrew Tate. Oh, controversial. Mr. Andrew Tate. Yeah. I'm just going to put this out there. I, how to say it in a, in a way, but I, I think with Andrew Tate is you put him in categories of where he is and what he's saying and what he's doing. Mm. But for his, I think for his himself, the way he portrays, I think I think I, I could I think I could like him. 
In fact, I think I, I'd go strongly to say that amongst other people in his field, I do like him. Mm. Because I think I've got people that com- I can compare him to that I like also, that also see similar controversial feedback. <laughs> Tell me, yeah. Andrew, say it, go. Tell me. So, yeah. Did you watch the podcast I sent you? Yeah. Yes. 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 Very, yeah. very insightful. Yeah. And what very... Is... How he is, how his views, I think, I think people just jumped on the bandwagon last year of how he is, how he acts. And it's easy that... to, to attack somebody uh, when they don't have views the same as your own or you don't understand where they're coming from. And I think the way of definitely the Western world at the moment, I think having more Andrew Tates would benefit some of the countries, some of the people, someone you know, someone in power maybe that can sort of control a country or in local government, anything like that. I think people won't actually listen. They'll say, oh, he's horrible. He's misogynistic. No, that's when we're narcissistic. Whatever. The wrong no, miso- yeah. misogynistic, narcissistic. Yeah. Misogyny um, is, yeah, different. They discussed misogyny. Yeah, yeah. Against, basically, he was portrayed as um, a woman hater dominating women. Uh, they are his property. He owns them. But when you actually get to listen and actually understand what he's actually talking about, it's totally far from it, I think. Mm. So, and I think... One of the best things that we can do is go back to early Andrew Tate first mm. before we discuss modern day and yeah. like, you know, I think we can, you can only discuss it for what's from what we know. And I think, you know, any sort of wrongdoings he may or may have not done. I think that that kind of needs to be one separate thing, but I think, for himself, yeah, I think early Andrew Tate was, he was a wake-up call to a lot of young male individuals who who may have not, may or may have not had that get-up-and-go male authority figure in their life. Yeah. Um, and I think the thing is with Andrew Tate is he, he was on everybody's algorithms, right? He was there <laughs> he for, was. for the good, for the good, the bad, and the ugly. He was there. Yeah, he was there. Definitely. And <clears throat> I think I can see how young men. And I think if there was an Andrew, T- I mean, for me, I've always listened. I think that you could put in a certain way in two thousand twenty-two to twenty-three, you could probably put Andrew Tate as a as a motivational speaker of sorts for a yeah. target audience. And I think if Andrew Tate was around when I was 18 to 24, 25, you'd have been like, this motherfucker's talking. This motherfucker, he's talking. And he's you'd have had the I'm banner listening. out, yes, Andrew, I'm on your team. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it, for because take away the whole, the women's side of it for a second. Yeah. Put on the, you know, men should be men. Yeah. You know, you should get up. You should get off your ass. Because he was saying, what are you doing? Sat there fucking fucking playing Xbox and smoking a vape pen all day and doing fuck all your life. And yeah. you're not going anywhere. Oh, you don't work out. Well, because you're a fucking little bitch. Do you know what I mean? Oh, you let someone who push you around. Okay, get up. And I think, you know, telling people to stop walking all over you. Telling people to don't let somebody control you. Don't be controlled in a relationship. Don't be told that you can't go to the pub on a Friday night. All this, and I think the thing is, a lot of men my age, your age, are listening to that going, yeah, fuck that bitch. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, I can see how it falls down the wrong path. Well, if we go back to the issues of Andrew Tate, was it the end? It was sort of middle to the end of 2022, wasn't it? When all of the, the, the social media influencers started making videos to try and get him cancelled on social media wasn't it he mm-hmm. was he had um i think he's actually still got it i can't remember what it's called but he has a website where men boys 
young adults, whatever, they can pay, I think it's £40, and they get a course of how to be top G, as it were. <laughs> how to be a man, um, a progressive man, in this modern world, in the traditional sense of, I am masculine, I am strong, I am determined, I am strong-willed, and things won't beat me. You won't be able to control me because I will be top of my game and I will control everything that I have power to control, basically. But I don't I don't think it was just based on those facts either, though, was it? It wasn't just based on how to be a man. He was they were talk they were strategizing, they were talking about, you know, one of the biggest things that we hear at the moment is passive income, all right? How can I make how can I make money by not doing anything? I, by sleeping. By yeah, going on exactly, holiday, exactly. By yeah, doing you stuff, set, you set something up daily, weekly, monthly. You are constantly getting income. By he sold a life. He sold a lifestyle to people that are in a position that are just being like, "Do you know what? I want to do this. I want a life. I want more from life that I know and I'm able to offer." And the thing is, there's a hundred people just out him out there doing the same thing right now without listening to him do you know what i mean so yeah. he's not he's not like he's a ideology he's not trying to say look if you don't listen to me you'll never be successful oh no he, he's more saying look listen if you want guidance this is what i offer because you got to remember right, he was he was he was his financial setup way before he was in hitting people's algorithms oh yeah do you know what i mean he was he successful. Had, he he was... had businesses in place, not just the one we've mentioned on the website. <laughs> he had loads of other different businesses that were... you got to remember as well, income. he had nothing. He come from a single parent household. He did. Single parent household from Luton, living with his mum, him and his brother. You know, he, he did it. I remember he did some early reality stuff, reality he, TV shows. It's on Big Brother, wasn't he? It was a kickboxing champion in, on Big Brother. Yeah, but he did one younger. That he did a show younger than that as well. Did he? Yeah, he did one where he was traveling. He was tra he, he did he did a show right where he was traveling around, and I can't. I need to figure out and find out the show. But I remember he was doing a show where he was like traveling around with younger people around different countries in Europe and stuff. I need to figure out. Um, but yeah, so self-made, oh, self-proclaimed. Yeah, you know. I think he know. I think he he knew where he was coming from, and he knew where he was going from a very young age. Mm, yeah. And I think there's too many younger people now that don't have that mindset. I most days don't have that mindset of fucking. How do I carry on today? How, exactly. how do you know how do how do I do this? You know, I I see my bills going. Duh, 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 and I see my income getting about to like sort of level pegging with it. And you're thinking, okay, so how do you make that stretch? How do you do that? I, I, what I do like about him, some of the things that he's talking about lately, is every day he gets up and he never stops working. His brain never shuts off. He is constantly working. And he'll get up and do like two, two hours of gym exercise every day. Never takes mm -hmm. a break. It hurts him but he's not going to let the pain beat him and dictate to him, oh, I'm not going to do this because I'm a, I'm a bit sore or anything. He does it because he, he has to. He has to beat it. So he has to beat everything and everybody, whatever he's doing. And mm -hmm. I, I don't think that's a, a bad mindset. I think that's that's very driven, driven mindset. And I think a lot of people would benefit. I would definitely benefit from being more driven in my mm -hmm. life. I, I All like of us would, yeah. I like to slack. Discipline. Up. Exactly. More I discipline, have discipline for sometimes. Sure. And I, I I yeah, I would definitely I would like to know him as a as a friend or a an acquaintance anyway. Mm -hmm. To be able to speak to him just to not necessarily get advice but a bit of a kick up the arse really, I think. I have I was gonna say, so I listen to lots of people like that, you know, that give me that mm. fucking hell, that boost. So from Coach Payne to Eric Thomas, I like him. Les Les Brown. Uh, Les Brown's probably one of the first motivational speakers I ever listened to, mm. ever listened to. And it was 
I never heard anybody speak that way before. Before, I never knew what motivational speech was until Les Brown. Um, and until listening to people, I mean, celebrities have followed on. Matthew McConaughey does motivational right, speech. All right, all right. <laughs> so, you know, you, and then, but I like listening to people and I like listening to people. One of the controversial people that I listen to is Dr. Jordan Peterson. Yeah. I follow a lot of his stuff and he, but he's more of a, I think he's more, he's more of a man that's not afraid to show his vulnerability. He's not, I wouldn't say he's a motivational speaker as such, but I would say he's more of a, a realist. He's gone through some of the worst pains a person can go through, but he's not afraid to speak of what he feels. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't, I'm not going to lie. I don't know nothing about him. I know he's been on mm -hmm. lots of podcasts and I see him all over YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. He's been on lots of different shows. I've not personally watched them. I've not really seen him. Get, he gets outed quite a lot for feminists don't seem to like him. Yeah, but who do they like If in reality? You know, he, 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 so he gets a lot of controversial from women in terms of feminism, in terms of equal opportunities, equal rights. But then if you look at the world today, what rights do what rights do men have that women don't? None. Men are the second class citizen nowadays. We are very much behind in everything. Apart from certain jobs and certain pay packets, that's it. Women women have, all the, have all the rights in court, all the rights in the home, with divorce, with the children. I am men, men have nothing. So yeah. I would, yeah, so what you just said is for me, is one of the things that I see a lot, so much, it's on my algorithms a lot at the moment, is I am seeing a lot of stories of men who are basically posting their story, and I get it, some people post because they like to get the feedback. Mm. I, I'm i not, as much as we do this, I'm not a poster. Um, but men that are basically struggling to have access to their children, for just just because it's weaponized just, just because it can be used. as well yeah and but it, it's used as a weapon you know i i'm sorry but i i'm not as strong as some of these men i if touch wood you know that's a road that i never go down and i don't oh, i envy any bloke that does go down that road but it's like because you know, have you seen some of the stories it's like there was one i've seen yesterday it was like man goes for a beer after work he comes home to find all his belongings outside his wife kicks him out his wife tells him she's met somebody else he's then not allowed to see the children he's you know he gets behind at work because of his stress he yeah. ends up drinking more you know because of his stress his wife's now going on holiday and having a new life with this new man who's around her children <sighs> That's probably going to cause a lot of controversy saying that, but you know what I mean? It's like. There's, there, there's nothing controversial about that. That's fact. I know loads of people that have done that to men, and it's disgusting. I, out of all of the men that I know that have kids that are not with their original partners, I would say 80% of them had to go through court to be able to see their children. And I think that's fucking disgusting. Yeah. It should be equal. Unless your man is beating shit out of you every day, then fair enough. Oh, yeah, there's, there's definitely rules about it. Like, if there's any form of abuse, like abuse, cheating, neglect, whatever, then the circumstances, but it, under circumstances where you just gone, I just don't love him anymore. I don't want him. I know. It, it, it and makes, then you go, it makes me feel sick thinking about, um, people not being able to see their kids because the woman has decided they're not good enough. I see, I don't know, I just see a lot of these stories. I see so many of these stories of men that kill themselves because they try and they give everything. They give 80% of their income. How can a man live off 20%? You can't. What are you doing if you're living off 20%? You couldn't even afford to sleep in your car. <laughs> no, because you wouldn't have to pay for petrol. We or eat. It's, uh, and you get, you just think, and you know, and these men that pay for court, and eventually, 
win their scenario, win their case. You think, fucking hell, man. And, but yeah, so that, again, sidetracked a hell of a lot. However, <laughs> it's just one of them things, right? And I think, I think that's where men need that motivation. And I think there should be a charity set up for men that are in that position where basically they've been stopped seeing their children for no reason at all. And there should be like a full charitable legal system that will say, we will support this man. If they can prove that everything they've, you know, has been sort of innocent because some, some of the stuff like I've seen, because obviously some of these blokes will upload the text messages of what's yeah, been said. Yeah, you're, yeah. Like you're not seeing the kids, like they'll call him dad, you know, and all that sort oh. of stuff. And you think, oh, mate, you're making me angry. Telling now. you now, I'd be, now. At that point, I'd be I'd be eating a bullet, man. I'd be done. I'd be done. That's the problem. That is the problem. And then they'd be portrayed as unstable, not mentally sound. And the woman was right to take the children away. I know. It's, Unfortunately, it's it's basically like screaming in a room full of people, and nobody's even looking at you. Okay. That's how they. That is literally how they must feel. Yeah, I don't, I don't envy um, the men on that that front. But I, I, mm. that's the problem with social media. You see a lot of these stories, and it's like, oh, do I really want to keep watching this, or do I want to keep reading this because it's just gonna, it's just gonna put things in my head and make me angry. And and yeah. so let, I tell you what, let's just let's just pause this and put it in its tracks. Let's 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 just say then, let's talk about algorithms and what you're supposed to see. So we talk about Andrew Tate and we talk about what a character he is in terms of a positive light, in terms yeah. of how he's portrayed in a negative light. The thing is, right, he's posting his stuff. People are trying to push this stuff. And sometimes you're just fighting against the darkness, aren't you? Yeah, you're not going to get that. They, they used the quote. There was a quote in that podcast that I was just like, fuck it, that's wicked. So in that podcast that we listened to, it's like, yeah. you have a demon in the you have a demon no. in the dark, demon in the dark, or an angel in the light. In the light. Which one grows stronger? The one it's that you feed. The one that you feed. Oh, that was that was powerful. That was so powerful. Because, because obviously he has turned he's Muslim now, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Andrew Tate. After all the issues with the Romanian police, etc. He turned. He was like, he he was Muslim before that though, way before that. He didn't really like put it out there though. He didn't publicly preach I, it. I don't. Think. I don't think until he was seen with his uh, Quran. Yeah, yeah. But then uh, I like the way they discussed faith as well. I like uh, the way I, that it was. It was just one. It was just faith. That was it. Yeah. Put your put everything in God's hands, and whatever happens, he you were supposed to do what God wanted you to do. So you will do what he's let you do, basically. And he's and I, admitted he, he's a, he's going to say sorry to interrupt, but he's admitted way before now he was an atheist he was. until he supported he he found obviously he found love found he's welcoming his calling to to Islam. Yeah. And I, again, he just found faith. You don't have to label it. You don't have to put a, a name of whatever, which one it is, but he just found that he wants to believe in something and put his faith into something. And he believes whatever he puts in, he'll get out. Fair play. I, I thought I thought the podcast with, with George Jenko was very positive because obviously George is a Christian. Mm -hmm. Very much so, believes, does everything through God. And he's, he's become more religious over the last three four months of, from what i've seen and his career is just fucking skyrocketing now is that because if he's made the right decisions is that because god helped him he's put his faith in god who knows but it seems to be both of them very religious everything is goes through religion for them and they're both very very successful now you can look at that however you want to but i i think i said to you a few months ago I said that there was something about religion that I was sort of like the idea of, 
and something that yeah. maybe was missing from me. Now, I wouldn't go to church on a Sunday to pray or whatever, because I don't believe in that. I think you should be able to pray anywhere. God is everywhere, whatever. I don't think I would be able to live that sort of life. But I do think, like I said before, there are certain bits that I would like to look into for my own self belief. I think the world is so bad now that there's something needs to be looked at. We all need to sort of change how the, how we look at life and our outlook and the direction we're going because it's just going to shit. And I think maybe that's what's needed. I mean, I don't know. It's just yes. an idea that I've been thinking about and watching them two together really, really inspired me. Resonate with you to sort of have a look into Re it. really, really make you think. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. A lot does that for me though. A lot of things that I see, hear, listen to, look at, day to even day to day life makes me yeah. resonate. I think, what is it? The what, what is it that I want? Mm. First of all, what what do you want as a person? What what is it you want? Because I think that one, you can measure your success on based on what you believe to be successful. Like, you know, you've just you've started a new job. You're, you're, you're getting healthier, you know, you're getting, you're drinking more water, you're, do you know what I mean? You're walking more, you're doing all the things that you should be doing. Okay. Yeah. So you measure, you measure your success and how you feel successful comparing yourself to another person. That's out the window. Don't do that. No, no, no. Don't, don't look at the people you went to school with or the people that you know, or the people that you look up to and say, okay, inspirations and goals are good. Mentors, everything else. Great. But I, I just feel like if you're not pushing yourself, the, the best, you can be your best and worst critic. And you should and listen you should to that. should be as well. You should be. Like, you can say, listen, you're fucking slacking off today. You're being a little bitch. Say it, telling yourself you don't want to go to the gym because you're fucking, you're comfy. You know, stop it. Get up. Stop putting yourself in a position where you're going, oh, so why have I, why have I lost no weight? Because you haven't fucking trained. You haven't changed your diet. You've not fucking got up off your ass like you said you were going to. Exactly. You know, and I think that's sometimes where you can be your best and worst critic is because you can tell yourself exactly what's going on with you. Everybody wants an answer, right? We, you, we all want an answer of how this world's going and, you know, what's it going to be like in five years? But the truth is, is make your world smaller and focus just on your world. How can I improve my world? How can I make myself better? Because I think the problem is people are looking at the bigger picture. And I think if you look too, if you look too far into the bigger picture, it's bleak and it's dark. And it, I mean, listen, right now we're seeing some of the worst stuff at the moment that we've ever seen in terms of news. So, you know, you've got wars, you've got, again, we, we said this last week, this week's worse. So you've got wars, You've got fucking child killers, uh, fucking, you know, yeah. acid attacks. Acid attacks. That fucker ain't been found yet, has he? <laughs> you know. Like, he, everything just, and to, uh, again, I'm, like, that's what I'm saying. It's like, your algorithms are sort of, I think they're so clever and designed to make you think small, negatively, but you just carry on looking. Like, pisses me off right i think as a dad as well it pisses me off is that everything is sexualized everything yeah and it's only to me a younger me would have been like shut up you've been a little bitch man fucking do you know what i mean but everything nowadays is sexualized mm. you know fuck it and why do you think young boys because they discussed they discussed pornography on the yeah. show no, very very in very in depth. very in depth yeah talked about it and and it's kind of like these young adolescent males that are growing into younger males and then eventually men when when is it you become a man what makes you become from a boy to a man what is it i don't know is it your first paycheck your first beer you know? no, definitely not. I think when you take responsibility of something, whether it's 
scraping money from a job you hate and saving money and actually buying a house, maybe buying a property or turning, Keeping that, your mouth money, shut. turning that money into a business that you become a man because that's obviously a responsibility. Maybe keeping spending, you know keep how, keeping your mouth shut knowing when to speak and when not to speak knowing when to you don't bite the hands that feed you, feed you. oh yeah that's, that's the, that that's very common nowadays you have people with that have no respect for anybody the youth mainly um, they just want they just want anything they think because they watch social media they watch stuff on tv they watch certain things on certain films that they can just do what they want there's no consequences and this is the problem and this is why the generation that we have at the moment will not succeed in life as maybe my generation have possibly yours you might just scrape it you might be the last one and then obviously more the ones and above. You're, you're right in what you're saying i think my generation are half and half scraping it you're the you're the bottom of the barrel of sanity i think and, and I think uh, half of them are getting over it and the other half are still the, staying on the other side. The, the 15 to 20 years below you, like from 10 to 30, I think they are they are doomed. But I do think it will all turn around eventually because something bad is going to happen. Maybe like we discussed last, last week, the war. Maybe that's going to have to turn some people from pussies into real people into men into people responsibility that will take acceptance of their actions something's gonna have to happen because the, the people nowadays that are applying for jobs they they haven't got the right attitudes to work in a real workplace and in the real world no idea shit jobs on. shit jobs for shit money been there done that man many a times I, yeah but even so they they don't have respect for their boss they do what they want they fucking oh i can't be bothered to come into work today if we did that in our or my day not your day we'd have been sacked my day any job though exactly, i think exactly. any mindset of and they they think they're all entitled they all think it's gonna work and do you know why it's because what they do these social media platforms like they said on the podcast they are they aim the algorithm on fucking idiots anything that's viral oh let's go in the street in, and scream and make stupid noises in shopping centers or try and play pranks on everybody and then oh they'll get the views that's not fucking what is that what are you given but to then the fucking world i think you you put that at the bottom of the barrel if you go to the top of the barrel and go okay let's look at digital content creators yeah okay so you look at digital content creators and they are the highest of high. Everything's endorsed. They're giving everything for yes. free. If you wear my wear my shoes, I will sponsor you, pay you, whatever. Sucky dick. Do you know what I mean? Oh, fucking hell. Yeah. But the thing is, right? Is I think they're a dying breed as well. Because soon these companies are going to wake up, going, fucking hell. We don't need digital content creators. Our shit sells or it doesn't sell. You know? Yeah. The problem is, how many companies have sponsored somebody and gone, so we've sponsored this person and they're all endorsing their brand and then all of a sudden that person does something wrong. <laughs> and it's like, we've now cut all we've cut all affiliation with this person. Yeah. And it's like, is it fucking is it fucking just too much too much fucking drama for no reason? And these 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 digital content creators are going they expect they expect it for free on demand on tap whenever this, they and, want yeah and you think to yourself honestly you 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 really pull the curtains back and go right so, so what are you you're a digital con you're a digital con like digital yeah. fucking content creator thank you <laughs> digital content creator who yeah. is making a load of money off other companies and going to events and showing your face Pull it back though. After all said and done, when you no longer become relevant, what is it you're offering? Fuck all. You know. Yeah. And I think some of that's why you, if you pull it back to some of these early two thousand and from two twelve to two fifteen seventeen or whatever, some of these reality shows that grew some of these now going from pissed up girl in a nightclub to 
successful digital con- content creators talking about being kind when you were literally sucking dick in a fucking shag pad. <laughs> Don't be that exactly. person. You have exactly. no right to preach and talk about, you know, how you're, you know, one of the greatest women that ever walked. I'm talking about real women, and real problems, or same as some of the blokes. Some of the blokes on these reality shows go- going from being the dickheads they were to now going, listen to me, listen to my show, because it will give you the best insight. Yeah. I have views that uh, you should listen to. No, fuck off. You, you're thick as shit, and you, you bring nothing to the table. I just think, like, you, this all this stuff resonates with Tate and how he is in terms of algorithms and stuff, but I always think we're fed what we're fed. You're always fed yeah, what you always you, you feed are. what you're looking for. And let's let's talk about Tate. Let's talk about Tate brothers as such. And then let's talk about the Paul brothers, for example. Yeah. Perfect example. So some of the stuff that Tate preaches, okay, he's not liked and you know, some of the stuff is, you know, controversial and absolutely, yeah. you know. It's gonna be posted. The Paul brothers you know, there's some of some of the shit they post. Mm, exactly. Let, let's talk. Let's let's talk about why you know, loads of people fell out with fucking Logan Paul before Jake came along. It's fucking many, All that stuff. Many, fucking many things. Filming dead bodies, and uh, you know the, the the crypto scams that he was involved with. Mm. Whether that was his fault or not, he he still put his name to it. Like you said, putting your name to anything. That these companies offer you endorsing it, yeah, you're exactly. endorsing it. Not going into detail what it is about, and then people spending money on that product because, oh, I like that person. It must be okay. And then, but then, whoops! It's such a cut. More money. It's a it's a cutthroat world, though, right? How many people have been endorsed? How many people, especially celebrity stars, have been endorsed by products and going, actually, do you know what? I want no affiliation whatsoever. And they go, no, you're you're in you're in a contract. Hmm. Like you ain't get you ain't getting out of this. Like you are gonna fucking, you're gonna sell. Have you noticed like every football player when there's an energy drink on the table and they're like, fuck that off. Yeah, yeah. When they're sitting at the press conference before or after the game and they don't, they personally don't fuck with that like, product. I'm, They'll be like, get rid I, of that. <laughs> I appreciate that though. I appreciate that because over the past, let's talk about twenty three, right? 2023 was a year that you sent every eight eight year old to maybe up to 20 crazy absolutely crazy over an energy drink you had parents running around shop after shop looking for these energy drinks it's not an energy drink but there you go it is what is it, what is it? it's just a, a juice drink like sugar a, sugar drink well no there's no sugar in it but yeah, it's uh, the the original one. They obviously do the energy drinks now, like Red Bull and that. They do their version. But the original drink that everyone was looking for was just like a hydration drink. So there's no oh, sugar yeah. in it. They had electrolytes in it. But what they failed to do is they took all the sugar out. But if you're going to use it for, say, gym stuff, physical um, activities, you need sugar in these drinks to get the electrolytes into the bloodstream quickly. Having no sugar in does nothing for it, so therefore it's very slow at doing its job. But that doesn't I just, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I like the, I like the analogy. It wasn't bad for the kids. I mean, I had some of them. My kids are having them. They're, but you, they're, be- they're better than Coke, say, and full fat Coke and all the fizzy shit. But they sent the world into a storm. They, they sent did. the world there was people into a store. queuing up at fucking five in the morning outside for a drink for, for a drink for Aldi and Asda at the beginning yeah for a, for drink, for a drink yeah like and on this is there was like controversial to say the least but this was just a craze it was like they, it was just throwing parents into storms going what the fuck are they doing it's like it's just a drink. I, mean, I get crazies. I was in crazies happen in your day. Crazies happen yeah, in my yeah, day. Yeah. It was like when fucking Pogs first came out and people going nuts for Pogs, Pogs or Pokemon cards or fucking yeah. marbles. I don't know. Again, it's a craze. <laughs> Problem is though, it's like 
God, some of the people. Like that fucking, I hate it, that Wakey Wines bloke. He was, what, I blame the fucking people what? went to his shop. What a yeah, bell Yeah, dickheads for buying it. Who's paying a hundred, who's paying a hundred pounds for a bottle of Prime? I mean, please. Two bottles of Prime for a hundred pounds. <laughs> like, dickhead. So, uh, where you been? Off oh, Wakey Wines or whatever the fuck that bullshit. And just go back, <sighs> go back in the stupid video. Come close, like, yeah, what a yeah, wanker. Like, fuck you now. However, you see it, you view it, you believe it, you buy it. You do. You're yeah. you're funding these people, yeah. just like your just like your algorithms are designed based on what you binge. So it says something like, if you watch a video for more than three seconds, it, that's it. It's gonna it's gonna keep popping up in your feed for as long as you similar videos. Yeah, yeah, similar videos. The topics that they were about, weren't it? Yeah. So if your mindset is, say you had a shit day today and your mindset was, I'm going to watch angry videos, sad videos. Because <laughs> I, I was listening to a podcast and it was like the other week and it was like, it was, it was Joe Rogan's podcast and some of his guests were like, they basically share disaster videos or car crash videos or all sorts between their group chat. And he was like, I watched a few of the videos that you sent me. It's like my entire algorithm for the next two weeks was literally just car crashes. And he's like, it was just negative, the whole thing. Yeah. Go, going back to uh, what they said on the podcast about morals and family traditions, and obviously the, the average family now is a single parent, whether it's male, uh, father or mother with the child mm-hmm. or children. That is obviously something that has been lost over the years. The traditional makeup of husband, wife, children, they stay together. Like we've discussed many times, back in the day, you didn't have social media. You didn't have that get out option of if you have a row with the missus or your bloke. Post it. You could, you could have, you could post it. Yeah, you get all that. Oh, I'll message you, hun. Yeah. <laughs> that, but then you always have, oh, if you need a coffee or a chat, just let me know. There's always that option nowadays. And what they discussed, basically being from like the religious point of view, obviously being married, well, not necessarily married, but at least living with your partner, bringing up your children together, the family picture, as it were, has been lost. And the, uh, mm-hmm. the traditions that used to make up, like my mum and dad are still together after, I think, 50 years this year. And that's now that's you won't get that anymore. Very no, but then and it is that because stand... of is that because of society, how society is, how what we see every day on on social media, on TV is mm. is the West destroying everything that we come no, to, man. to grow. Mo- no, motherfuckers are having affairs way back when. Do you know what I mean? They were fucking doing it. My my parents. My parents, I didn't, I didn't grow up in a two-person household, you know. I didn't have my father in my life for a very long time. Yeah. Um, not through, there was no, there was none of that stopping stuff, you know. I was, I was shown very clear at an early age, go to your dad's, you know. And there was back and forth, weekends, all that sort of stuff yeah, for a little yeah. while. And then that was it. My, my father just grew into a different life. He, he found the new life. He found new wife, new children. And it was like, I was plan B. It didn't bother me though. And the reason why it didn't bother me is because some of the figures that I've had in my life since then, like I think anybody that comes into, comes into a home that's willing to take on someone else's children, just because they're, you know, because you, you fall in love with somebody that's got kids. You're taking on their children. Mm, yeah. In some like, form, you, yeah. You, you're taking them on as well. Yeah. Like, you can't just have that one person to yourself going, seriously, honestly, you're great, but you've got kids. However, when I was older and so, like, you know, some of the male role models that I had in my life without having a dad showed me all the stuff that I needed to know probably more than my dad would have at the time. 
Yeah. But but then that's life, right? So I think of every experience as an education experience, and I've seen all different walks of life. And I've noticed lots of walks of life and how things operate and how things go on and how things go bad and how you fix things and how you become a man and how you fucking... So I'm... Yes, traditionally, I think it'd be great if couples could stay together once you get married and, and the belief stays that once you become a family unit, that you stay together and that you, that's it. I don't believe it's there anymore. I believe that, I mean, look, at the moment, there's that big, there's that couple on TikTok. Is it, I can't remember the names. Dan, Dan and Lucy. Lucy. Yeah. Married for three months. Three months. And yeah, they split. I don't, <laughs> I don't know their story. No, I can't the problem more, is more into it. Yeah, I can't. I can't. And it's, oh, I'm so horrible for saying this, but I can't just take one part of a sad story and make my mind up. And don't get me wrong, the problem is, is he's come on and posted because he wants support of how he's feeling. 100% yeah, he's get ruined, it. Yeah. He's broken. He's a broken man. And yes, great for speaking about it. Showing your vulnerable side is not a weakness. Okay. Oh. She's not shared her side. She's not put her side out there. I don't think she wants to. They lived. The problem is, is that people that live their, and I mean live their entire life in the public eye. On social it, media. Yeah. The problem is, it's not the public eye, is it? It's, it's, it's a platform. It's a target audience. Yeah. Not everybody knows who Dan and Lucy are. They don't know. Only if you you're on go. TikTok, and I only knew last week because I saw a <clears> video <throat> pop up of a man crying. I thought, what's he crying for? And I watched the video. I'd never heard of them before until like a couple you of could, ago. You could go to one of your mates and go, oh, did you see that Dan and Lucy's blurb? And they'll be like, who the fuck is that? Exactly. Like, I don't yeah. know. Why? Why is it on your algorithms? It's because you view it. You've seen it. Yeah. Like, it, it's just one of the things, isn't it? So you do see it, but then I can't believe that story until I know the whole story. Will you ever know the full story? No. Do they live that, like, does he prank her every day of their life and take it too far? Quite possibly. Well, he said that she got bored of him. Bored of the pranks, bored of him. Didn't love him anymore. I thought, three months, did you really love him in the first place? They were together eight years before that. Oh, were they? Okay. Fair they enough. were married three months. Married. Oh, uh, okay. And every story come out, doesn't it, like... Because there was a big story about she cheated on him with one of his best men. Typical story that's going to come out from somebody that knows nothing. Yeah, the stories are stories. The problem is, is it takes one little story for it to blow up and mask the whole thing. Kind of like most social media posts or most controversial things on social media. Really, it takes that one little. One little thing for someone to say, then all of a sudden that person is wiped out. Unfortunately, social media is never going away for a long time yet, I don't think. But no, no, it won't. Talking, it talking won't. about TikTok, in China, obviously that's where TikTok comes from, it's from China, they only allow you to go viral and to promote and get famous is like music, oh. musicians and actors, people that will benefit your life, rather than some bloke who's pranking people, being a knob, like a lot of people on TikTok. So, which I think is a good I, thing. I don't know. I like the knobheads of TikTok. <laughs> yeah, but you, people used to abuse YouTubers, yeah? Oh, it's just a YouTuber trying to be famous, yeah? A lot of them, if they're successful, right, do become famous, and they're more famous than fucking people on TV a lot of the time. But then TikTok is like the bottom level of fame. TikTok is like down here. It's like nowhere near YouTube level, and that's nowhere near TV level. TikTok's but, like 10% discount. It is. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's like fucking B&M, isn't it? <laughs> it's, 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 oh, no, don't fucking, no, 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 no. You can or, fucking take that back. Or Timu. <laughs> TikTok oh. Timu. <laughs> I mean, they all promote it. And I think... I know. That's, ah, look at TikTok shop. Half of the stuff that comes from that. But then I love, like... I love the fact that ordinary people 
that never never thought they had a voice, never thought that anybody yes. gave a shit right. what they said, right? Or and yet, because you've got some wicked characters on there. Like I watch a guy that does like basically, he does his own sort of sketches. Let's say he he makes his own sketches, and he's fucking brilliant. Is he going anywhere? Maybe not. But millions of people watch his videos. Love him. Do you know what I, what I'd say to that is? I agree with you. TikTok is a great platform because, say, the pool guy that we used to watch, yeah, people that chop wood or build these little huts in the forest, yeah, on TikTok they pop up, they start, blah blah blah. Before they would only be on YouTube, yeah. You'd have to actually search for them on YouTube because it doesn't have a timeline. Mm. You'd have to search for them. Then you That's have to wait, wait for all the adverts, get into the long video. But now you can watch, say, a minute. Twenty seconds. Video. Yeah. yeah, and then and you, you like know, them. You like them exactly. Or you don't. Oh wow! But it's it's an easier platform. I don't agree with the fact that they're putting like twenty minute videos on there now. I think that's. Do you not pisses me off? Do you not? This, well this, 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 this is this is one thing that you're going to get as well. You'll get this because it pisses you off as well. So, I'm the dickhead, right? So me and you, we watched fucking hundreds of hours worth of fucking. Porn stars and storage hunters, right? Storage warts. Storage hunters. I'm yeah. Really, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we watched them. Yeah. How many times Lizardly. do you see? Yeah. How many times do you see a clip on TikTok, and it will show you about a minute of the click, and then you'll go, "Oh shit, where's part two? I fucking need to find part two. Every time, porn stars with that family with a big old bloke with a white hair with his son they don't like. Yeah. There's always, I always show it. Someone comes in and said, I want to pawn this. And then they go, oh, get such and such out. They come and have a you look. You get to how much it's worth. How yeah. much it's and worth it's like, when it's gone. Where's the other video? You have to click on the, that profile of that, that channel. Try and find click it. Bait. See if there's a click part two. Bait. Most of them, there's four parts. And you're watching like fucking eight minutes anyway. <laughs> four like, parts of a video oh, that oh, you've oh, already seen. I know. That you've already seen. I know. That's the, that's the again, that is... I... I watched, Sad. as you were saying about 20 minutes of videos, I watched a movie. I watched 20 minutes of a film that I've seen about four times just because it was on TikTok. I was like, oh, fuck, I've seen this in ages. Realised I'd been watching it for about 16 minutes and then going, what the fuck am I doing? I, I do that on Facebook when it's a film and they, they show a clip or the start of a, a scene and it's like, Oh, what's that? That looks quite good. And then you start watching it and you think, well, how, what's going to happen? Like on Facebook, watch the watch bit on Facebook. And it's like, for fuck's sake, it's like 25 minutes. I've watched like seven minutes. It's really good. But I think, do I really want to watch the rest of it? And then you have to, you, you fast forward a bit to see what else happens. And it's like, oh. they hook you because they're doing their job. That is what they, they want your attention. That is what they want. They need the time. They need you to spend time on their social media channel, their platform, just to keep you hooked, to, to bung an advert in. Maybe you'll buy something from the advert. They'll get commission for that. They'll get a percentage. And it's just an endless so, cycle. It's a loop system that goes round and round. I fell into something the other day, and basically only because, again, because TikTok pulls you in. Mm. So basically, there was... You ever heard of, you know, like these these sort of YouTube boxes slash TikTok boxes, yeah. fights and stuff. So basically, there was a person on TikTok. I think his name is HS, HS TikTok or something like that. <laughs> and then there's there's somebody there's somebody called Ed Ed Matthews. You heard of him? He's like, oh a, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's done the last yeah. two Misfits boxing fights. Yeah, yeah. So he's in the Misfits fight. Massive now, yeah. KSI's thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So these two blokes, I mean, this HS is one of those. He's he's another. He's a shit version. He's a, he's he's like a pound shop version of Andrew Tate. He honestly, he is. He's fucking. He's a dickhead. Absolute dickhead. However, so they basically set up their own underground fight scene let's call it mm. which was basically because he had this there was oh i can't remember is it, I th Mo, is it something like modi modi or something like that some guy that wears like a face mask 
big on big on TikTok. In if you if you if, it, if he's on your algorithms, sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. And they had someone called General G, who's basically another bloke who this HS has molded from being a fucking bedroom gamer to being like stuck him in a fancy tracksuit and was like, here you go, we'll make it famous, sort of shit. <laughs> anyway, they set up their own underground fight scene. Yeah, it's quite an underground fight scene. I don't think it is. But they oh. said, listen, every Thursday, we're going to get a whole bunch of TikTok fighters. And they did. The f- last Thursday, they did it. They got a bunch of TikTok fighters. They went to a local boxing gym, set up, set up like a fight show, basically, in a local boxing gym. It was fucking terrible. Absolutely <laughs> terrible. However, people wanted to see these people fight because they're TikTokers. They wanted to see them fight each other. No. You know, they were selling tickets to the show. And I mean, they, they must have had the budget of about 500 quid to set this thing up. They were fit. They were, so they were live streaming it on Instagram. Okay. Yeah. They were going, so they were going, listen, we're going to put a show on this Thursday at this boxing gym. We're selling tickets. They sold all the tickets, all sold out. They got all the fighters down, big on TikTok, all these fighters down, got them on live stream, got them sort of fighting in a boxing ring, three rounds of two minutes. There were some of them are levering the shit out of each other. One of the blokes was on that, do you know that Channel 4 prison show that was on recently? It was, it was like celebrities locked up or something. Maybe, no, I don't know. There was a couple of those lads on there. Okay. Anyway, this live stream had 150,000 people watching it. Wow. So the interest is there. They're getting the views. No bu- no budget. They just basically okay. said... Okay. So that, again, that Ed Matthews was the one carrying it with yeah. this HS bloke. And they just fucking organised it and said, let's put on a show. People want to see. Let's see how many people we can get watching it. 150,000 and I mean it was grainy as shit the fucking camera kept fucking dropping out but people were watching it people were like I want to see these two motherfuckers lamp each other <laughs> why? because fucking TikTok it's crazy it's fucking crazy it's, it's, ama- it's amazing what you can do with a little bit of following with a, f- with a phone exactly you can put on a whole production that We'll get more views in a TV show on national TV just on your phone. It, it, it's crazy, but fair play to them, you know. That'll probably, if it's a regular thing, they'll they'll get more more into the production and they'll make it a bit better. They might use a real. I'd imagine. <laughs> I to be, yeah, but then I seen this the other day. So there was a there was a wedding photographer, and she had like a so she had iPhone XR, whatever it is, the best one. But she had it on a gimbal with like handles and everything. And she was taking people's wedding photos, taking their wedding photos with her phone. Yeah. And someone said to her, how can you charge all the money that you're charging when you're doing everything on your phone? And she was like, well, cause I've got this lens for this. And mm. like, it turns out that your phone can pretty much do anything better than any four grand camera out there now. Oh yeah. Your phone can, you know, there'll be there's probably phones that film in like six K at the moment. Most most new phones shoot in four K anyway. You know. That's what I mean how but it's it's mad to think of the world that we live in, how many people have made a proper income just from their phone? Thousands. Hundreds of thousands. Do you know what I mean? Whether you're fucking getting your tits out and making a subscription, fair play to you. Or you're fucking just shooting videos, shooting, sh- shooting your mates doing shit. Honestly, it's a sad world. Men, really. <laughs> men, men are just pissed that they can't do it. Men are just pissed that they ain't got a set of tits that they can fucking sell online. <laughs> oh no, it's fucking. No one, no one wants to look at sexy men. <laughs> you know, unless you're ripped to fuck and you just stand there dripping milk off your chest and down your abs. Apart from that, no, there's nothing, nothing's going on. No one but the lie, to... the <laughs> lies that women tell you when they go, we don't want abs. We don't want abs. Yeah, but you'll go to a Magic Mike show, though, won't you? <laughs> yeah. We like, we like these grafted, we like these blue collar, hardworking men that look like real men. Do you, though? Because yeah. honestly, 
you're calling me a fat cunt behind my back. <laughs> and you're going what sees men with their knobs out getting wet. Yeah. You're telling me off for finishing your ships, so <laughs> don't fucking come at me. I oh, know, man. It's uh, it's just the way of the world now. That's how it is. Hey, it's the world we live in. Just like us, we talk shit. We've talked shit for nearly a hundred episodes now. Hundred episodes of talking shit. I oh, know. No, and why? Done. Because. And that's the thing, right? So going back from day one to now, some of our facts are not relevant. They're not, tr- but probably not true. They're not real. <laughs> We're not doctors, fucking serious. <laughs> yeah, we've like we've got no credibility. No. Like nobody listens to what we have to say. But you might enjoy <laughs> just fucking just listening to us shoot the shit and fucking make our own sort of image of the world. But exactly. Honestly. <laughs> And if you do, I want you all to give us a five-star rating on all the podcast platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, all them, TuneIn Radio, all them, because you can rate us, give us five stars, leave a comment of what you think about the show, and it helps us, because it will push us up the rating. Absolutely. We'll get, we'll get from 4 million to like 399 million, 999. <laughs> We might go and then the place. <laughs> some somebody out there might give us a beard trimmer or a balls trimmer. <laughs> someone someone might give us one of those uh, whoop bands, fucking and fitness trackers. <laughs> and then we can cut ourselves. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Oh, yeah. Guys, as always, it's emotional. As always, off topic. As always, haven't discussed half the shit that we was actually going to discuss today. <sighs> We just talk. That's the problem. We just talk. <laughs> Fucking hell. I think we'll have to do a part two of this. Mm. Go back into the, the deep depth of Andrew Tate. I don't think... I don't think it's as deep as people make out. I think it's quite simple. I think it's very... But people nowadays I, just don't want to listen. Don't agree with... However, music, I, think he, I think he's very intelligent. Very intelligent. Very, and I I think he's intelligent in the way that he portrays himself to the way that people portray him back. He knows how to. Do you know, like somebody that knows how just to push buttons, but not push buttons as it's like they're like they still like him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like he lifted his hand up, didn't he? He said some. He in the start of the show, he lifted his hand up and he said something like. In a minute. Yeah, and it's sh- like sh- yeah, yeah. Sh- yeah. When they talk about COVID and that, saying everyone's on lockdown. Yeah, yeah. They're like men, yeah. Will, men will sit back and assess it and think about it, whereas women will panic because women work on emotion, whereas men don't work on emotion. Sh- it's just like sh- yeah, it's just now. Yeah, yeah. And some people will portray it- that as being sexist towards a woman, treating her like shit when it wasn't. It was just like sh- don't worry about it. I see. My opinion is I don't think the world is male dominated anymore. It's I not. It's not. my working field, a lot of my superior a lot of my superiors I know are women. Does it bother me? No. I think I, if you're bothered I feel like if you're bothered too much, you're just gonna you're just making your I think that's the problem with today's society, is you're you're not making anyone else angry but yourself. Exactly, yeah. And I think you have to do that with your own motivation as well is nobody cares. Nobody cares whether you fail. Nobody cares if you're fat. Nobody cares if you're, you know what I mean? You're working out. Nobody cares if you're doing well. What they will care about though, is when you start posting about it, when you start asking for help, when you start, you know, how many people go, Oh, you know, I wish they would have come to me first or spoke to me about it. No, you don't. No, you don't wish they'd be there. (laughs) <laughs> like, I like the saying when they say people only cry at funerals for them. For themselves. They don't cry for, yeah, they don't cry for the person that died. No. They cry for themselves. I should have done more. I should have been there more. Yeah, exactly. They or, feel guilty most of the time. It's it, and it's not easy to it's easy to fall into the trap of going. You know, you've got a mate who's just split up with his missus, and you think, oh, he wants to go out on a night out. Okay, we'll give him one night out. You know, we'll take him out, cheer him up a bit. And then he's like, oh, what do you want to do this week? And then, you know, oh, he's still moaning about it. Oh, he's posting every night. And then all of a sudden, all of his mates are talking about it behind his back and going, 
He's still fucking going on about our bird. It's fucking terrible. And not helping him though. No, no, not helping him. Just, just fucking criticising him. Oh, he's moaning again. Fuck's sake, get over it. Get another bird. Oh, he's a fucking sad sap. Oh, well, now I wonder why she left him. Yeah. It's like, fuck. It's, honestly, you be. That's the thing, though. Most of us are guilty. We don't even realise we're guilty until until you've seen Something it firsthand. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. We've all, got shit. We've all got shit going on. Everyone's dealing with easy. shit. Everybody's dealing with shit. So, no. But, hey. I read something yesterday that said, if you, if you ever find yourself really sat there bored, and bored multiple of times, it's because your mind's peaceful. It's because your mind's at peace, okay. and you, you're not you're not living in you're not living in chaos. Is that some people function better in chaotic environments, and when they're bored and they've got nothing and nothing's going on, and then you start feeling negative because you've got nothing going on. It's actually because you're so used to being in a chaotic environment that you don't know how to live any other way. Just one of those things, isn't it? It's like we all need something. Something we all need something that makes us feel normal, makes us feel part of something. You know, you, you always know these people are getting relationships and then they break up with someone. And then before you know it, they're back in another relationship. Why? Because they can't be on their own. Mm. It's one of the things like every, everybody's different. Everybody fucking lives in different ways. Anyway, I'm just rambling shit. Probably because I'm hungry. On that note, people, thanks for joining us for another show of Dads, Lads, and Babs. If you like us, send us a message. If you want us to talk about something, we'll talk about it. We're not scared. Deuces. Peace out, motherfuckers. Oh, he's changed the ending.